Welcome everybody who's here live, everybody who is on Zoom, who is watching the recording. We sending you some love, everybody. Wave, send them some love. Good job watching the recording. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I know it's hard to make the time to be on live with everybody. I myself have missed for the first time in like five years since we've been running these calls, a lot of calls this season because it has been uh, the night my daughters play football. And of course, tonight they moved the championship from next week to this week, and it's currently happening right now. So go team, they're going to win, uh, and I get to be here with you guys. So um, we're going to talk about motivation, and tonight I really want to kind of give two concepts when it comes to motivation, short-term motivation and long-term motivation, and how you guys can use our community and the tools you already have in order to find both. And I was on a call recently with somebody and she wanted to maybe work with me for private coaching. And uh, at the end, she was a little bit upset. She's like, but wait, you're, I have everything I need. Why do I need to do this? And I'm like, well, if you just use the stuff you have, you don't need to do this. And she was really angry for a minute. And then she's like, okay, I mean, I get it. And so it really kind of pushed her to then go and use the things because here's the secret to short-term and long-term motivation, guys. You get excited about making a change. Then you figure out how to make that change permanent. Once you make it permanent, then you gather all of the lifestyle support that you need in order to make it a permanent habit, like this call. There are people on this call who've been with us for years now. Seema, I'm looking at you, right? You want to keep your, your weight off? You stay active in your accountability WhatsApp group with Ayala, right? You show up to these calls. You, you do the things that keep you in this zone of community. And that's the difference between a struggle state and a person who is maintaining motivation. So I want to talk a little bit about what you guys currently have in order to see more short-term results. Who would like to see some short-term results between now and Purim? Now and Passover, yes? Ruthie's raising her hand. Let's see some pictures on here, guys. Anybody? I, Sabrina, I know maybe you're with the baby. Rena, Pasha, Viva, can we see your beautiful faces, okay? Let's make sure we're interacting. So what's a short-term goal that you guys have between now and Purim? Feel free to either unmute or put it in the chat. And maybe, uh, Yoni, you can share if anybody has anything good in the chat. Um, okay, guys, what are some short-term goals that you're looking at between now and Purim? Anybody have something in mind? Okay, Khana, be a little more specific as to, and Aviva, please be a little more specific as to what you want to be consistent with. There's a lot of things that we do in a day that we can be consistent with. Uh, Rena, I saw yours. Um, stopping to snack on sweets between meals, between now and perm. That's a great example because it's very concrete and very measurable. If you start actually tracking uh, how many treats you're having between now and on a regular day from your previous days, like you actually look back and then you ask yourself, okay, which times of day am I having treat snacks? Okay, if that's the case, Here's the thing, when it comes to a short-term goal, you need to clear your calendar a little bit. Has anybody ever cleared their calendar to reach your weight loss goal? Like this week, I cleared my Shabbat calendar to have a weight loss Shabbos. I said to my husband, please don't offer me whiskey, don't offer me dessert. If we're going to a Kiddush, expect me to have my water bottle. I'm not, I'm not available for distraction this weekend. I need to get some momentum. We're getting close to Purim. I need some momentum going into this week. And he was like, okay, no problem. He didn't open a bottle of wine. He poured himself a shot of whiskey. Okay. I served dessert and I went 
got my hot cocoa at the same time. I served just the right amount of dessert for the amount of people. I made myself unavailable for something else. I cleared my schedule for weight loss. Does anybody have a good example of when they have successfully kind of like cleared their schedule for weight loss? Maybe you were going out to dinner or going out to an event and you ate beforehand, right? Because it was a networking event. You don't really need to eat there. Maybe you had a wedding and you just decided that you weren't available for the smorg at this wedding or you weren't available for the dessert bar because you had a short-term goal. Anybody have a successful example? Sabrina said that she puts the baby to sleep when her husband takes out dessert Friday night. Perfect. That's a great example of saying, hey, I'm just clearing my schedule. I'm not available for a temptation right now. Anybody, this is a key to short-term goals because distractions over the long term, it doesn't make a big difference if it takes you a month or two months to lose five pounds. But in the short term, it makes a tremendous difference to our feelings of motivation. Right. I mean, uh, so she talks to friends during Kiddush at Shul. Because none of that stuff on the tables is like worth it. Amazing. Seema, yes. Um, I'm making cookie cookies now on the call so that I'm making them for my kids, but I know that if I'm on the call, I'm not eating the dough either. So like for me, that aligns well um, to bake on the call. Whatever. Good. <laughs> no, that's a great example. So we have now, let's say a week, right? Between now, next Shabbos, we have is Shabbos Zachor. Then we, right? Like this is, we're having with two weeks till Purim. Monday, tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh, right? We have two weeks till Purim. Is there anything that delicious that's coming up between now and Purim? Can you clear your calendar for the short term? Once you clear your calendar, you say, okay, what events do I have? Does date night this week have to be a restaurant? Could, they, could date night this week be a walk? Could date night this week be a card game, right? Like what can I clear out of my schedule for the next two weeks to just reduce the amount of temptations and to be serious that going into perm when I have momentum, I'm gonna feel better. Okay, who's ready for the disclaimer? Do not go into this from a deprivation mindset. This isn't, I can't have, I shouldn't have, I may not have. This is the same way if you were going on vacation, you had to clear your work schedule. You have stuff you have to get done before you go on vacation. You have stuff you don't want to take on vacation with you. You're not depriving yourself of work when you're on vacation. Having the weight loss by RM is going to feel like a vacation a vacation from the stress, a vacation from the anxiety, a vacation from choosing every second, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? It's just not worth it. When you have a short-term goal, clearing the deck is really important. I choose not to, like I'm choosing something else instead. Before we contrast this with long-term motivation and how we sustain long-term, I want to just kind of dig into this short-term for a sec, because we have like a lot of good reasons to have short-term goals right now. We have Purim, and then Purim is, remember, just one day. If you live in Jerusalem, it's still just one day. Don't take both days of Purim, <laughs> okay? It's one day. Right after that, we're thinking about Pesach. Pesach is, we always do a big call before Pesach. We always talk about it a lot, but it's also right on the other side of Pesach is summer clothes, okay? is the next season, is wanting to be outside, is wanting to feel lighter in your body. So I wanna take any questions that anybody has if you've been struggling with a short-term goal or if you just wanna improve the, your strategy around a short-term goal. Who has a question or wants help breaking down how to create a short-term weight loss goal and kind of clear that schedule around it? Yeah, Seema. So um, I, I mean, it's probably not what you're mean, but I've been trying to figure out, I know Alana has a call on it that she did, what the appropriate amount of like, to make sure that you have like protein. 
enough protein in your day. So I feel like that's a goal of mine is just to make sure that I'm getting enough protein um, in my day. I'm exercising more. I'm like lifting weights more. And for some reason, I associate that with having more protein also, or just making sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe I've been listening to a few calls no, yeah. like in terms of age. Um, Cause I'm, so gonna, I'm almost 40. So having between 15 and 20 grams of protein per a meal. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, uh, and then let's say you're doing a workout only if you feel like you actually need to build muscle, then you can add another 10 to 15, um, post-workout okay. within 30 minutes of workout. Okay. So, but this also perfectly aligns with in Israel, the, um, fitness association has a really easy way. They say, look at your weight in kilo. That should be about the amount of grams of protein you want to consume in a day. So if you're 60 kilo. 60 grams of protein, right? That's three 20 gram servings. So very mm -hmm. easy to remember, kind of easy to think about if you're 76 kilo, 76 grams of protein, et cetera. Okay. Uh, and that'll really okay. kind of help keep you full. Obviously try track and see, and remember that not all proteins are created equal. You have to also look at the fat content of the protein that you're choosing. You know, if you're going to okay. choose like heavy ground meat versus, you know, leaner ground chicken, you know, you're going to want to keep that in mind. Right. Okay. Interesting. No, because I know I generally have like two hard boiled eggs for lunch. And then I realized, how do I know they're large? They might be medium eggs. So, because I get them from work and I realized that uh, that's not even 15 that's grams. Protein. That's right? not, so that's not. Right. That's even not. Two, 12 grams for large eggs is 12 grams. Right. So I'm like, okay, so then I've been adding a protein bar in also that I found and I don't, but I'm eating it like closer to like 334. And I'm like, maybe I should have it early. I'm, maybe I don't even need it. Cause then I was listening to Alana's call this last week and she mentioned the snack and I was like, oh gosh, like I don't, then I realized like, I really need to be clear about what my goals are. I know I need to up my protein. So that's just my goal and how I'm going to do it. I'm just trying to work through it. You know, like, so like I always so have, that's a perfect I, question. Um, in this exactly where I was going to go into in terms of snacks, very often Alana's talking about snack -tional. Um, what she's not talking about is getting rid of your veggies in between meals. She's talking about like the level of accessories, the level of protein, the level of, um, all kinds of other things that you're trying to add into your day. So like, if you have access to hard boiled eggs, what if you did one egg and four whites? that would be much closer to the amount of protein you wanted to have. Right. It's funny because the whites, but I don't even know where to get that. I just get it from work. They boil eggs and I just take two. That's all. Um, I work, I work for Holy. No, Day but so why I'll, couldn't you I, just take five? For my five, what? Hard boiled like eggs. I get, oh, five hard boiled eggs. And just eat one yolk and eat the other whites. Oh, could be, but I, I have a hard time with that because in my mind it's waste, but I know it's not a waste if it's for, you know, I go through that with my kids all the time, but no, I, I rather add in something else. Like today I took chickpeas instead of my, like I had a pizza, pizza uh, for breakfast. And then I had, um, chickpeas by lunch with my, um, eggs. So I was thinking maybe that's good, but I don't know, I'm trying to like figure it out. Totally, okay. could be great. It's 10 grams of protein or eight to 10 grams and a half a cup of chickpeas. Obviously it's also your FFC. So that's a right. great way to do it. Uh, but also, I mean, that might be a great place to supplement with a protein powder like Orgain or something where you shake it up with water and, and add that into your day. And then you know, it's only on days you're weight training and that you might not need right. it on days you're not weight training. Right, right. Right. I mean, okay, you also have a lot of proteins at your disposal just simply because of where you work. Couldn't you just add a little bit of cottage cheese? Because they, they do have low fat cottage cheese there. No, not, not at Holy Bagel. No, I could bring from home. It's not like such a, you know, I happen to not like cottage cheese. I just, my only dairy that I eat is my protein yogurt. I eat the same thing every single day. Like that's just, so I'm like, okay, great. What's going to be my next thing to add in that I'm going to eat every single day. But I know that it shouldn't be like that. I should have a little variety. Sometimes have chickpeas, sometimes have a protein bar. Sometimes I have powder. But you I just like have to be better. careful with the protein bars in that they're never just protein. They're always also a good amount of healthy fat and carbs okay. and fiber. They're much more like a small meal than they are like a snack. Right. 
Right. Just I'm just wondering if there. it would be too much to eat it instead, like with my eggs and a protein bar as opposed to having more eggs. But yeah, I actually looked at this specific protein bar compared to the beach bar. And it's basically similar, like numbers. Which brand is it? My, my, I have a, I have an 18 year old son. He buys every kind of protein bar out there. Pen, pen, Pangea, Pangea, Pen, Pen something. Oh, okay. Something it's not like an Israel brand. It's not like an Israel. No, brand. it is. It's an Israeli brand. It's Pen, Pen something. I don't know. I have a whole collection of them in my bag. Okay. Um, not the bars, but whatever. I feel bad. I'll let you get to somebody else's question, but no, this is what's been on my question. mind. One of the things I was going to bring up is, uh, I think Yoni, I know has said this many times, take a picture of it and put it in the group and we'll discuss it. Okay. Okay. Protein. It it literally says the word protein in Hebrew. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, you're right. That's what it is. But the company is something else. The the company's a pen, pen something, whatever. Okay. Take a picture of it and we can compare. The best one I found in Israel is the all in bar. Um, but it's really much more of a meal replacement bar, like for somebody like us, like for my son, who's 18 and weight training for him, it's a snack for the rest of us, but it has the best low sugar, high fiber, you know, protein ratio. So you kind of really want to see, and it might not be a weight loss food. Like she talked about in this week's call, you know, you build stronger muscle every time you work out building increased muscle is different. Okay. And that's when we're increasing our protein is to build more muscle. Um, okay. Let's, I want to talk about snacks when you're really trying to hit a short-term weight loss goal. Planning for snacks is really important. If I want to hit a short-term weight loss goal, I'm planning on eating five times a day, even though normally when I'm not, I'm eating bigger meals and I'm not even thinking necessarily about snacking. So it's really important if you're trying to short-term goal to include vegetables, like a vegetable snack between breakfast and lunch, a vegetable snack between lunch and dinner. When you're looking for a short-term goal, increasing your vegetables is really going to help you to avoid the pitfalls of the mindless snacking. And the mindless snacking, even make it six meals a day and eat veggies after dinner. Okay, early after dinner, but it put in more kinds of vegetables in your day in advance. And it's really going to help you keep to plate it. It's really going to help you make sure you're actually veggies most and not just veggies a lot. And it's going to help you reach that short term goal. Here's what's cool if we transfer into long term goals. As you hit that short term goal, you can look and be like, wow you know what, I'm really going to keep that morning veggie snack, or I'm really just going to keep that afternoon veggie snack. That's a sustainable like thing. It's a habit I really want to incorporate. You know, Yoni, I think still makes right that big tray of roasted vegetables very, very often. She still makes that same big box of raw veggies. And I bet on days you don't do it, there might be something else on that day, right? Like it's not just that that water magically takes that spot, right? No, there's always veggie. There's There's always always veggies veggies there. Because very often, in order to break a plateau, we need to be eating more vegetables. And often we struggle at meals, especially if we're struggling with being mindful eating. We'll go for seconds on protein. We'll go for seconds on something else. We'll really think we're veggies most, but we might not be. So true. Yeah. Okay, great. I think it's the safeguard. Um, I think very often when people are not as hungry, their eyes trick them into thinking that their plate is veggies most. And yeah. it really, I, I'm finding with a lot of people lately that they're, I, I keep saying, it's really veggies more. It's not veggies most. And yeah. I think the difference of it, like infusing those veggies between breakfast and lunch and, and dinner and lunch and dinner lets me know I am veggies most that day. Because if I am infusing it in two other times, that even if I'm falling short a little bit here or a little bit there, I have been able to make up for it knowing that those two other opportunities for veggies are there. I just think it's really, really important. And especially guys, if you're getting bored of your veggies, I leave my raw veggies like for my snacks. And I start when I'm in weight loss mode, I'm like, Ooh, and I want to start my lunch and my dinner with a salad. Not like that's my veggie at dinner, but like, I'm like doing a starter salad. And then maybe I'm having cooked vegetables on my plate. Right. Like six to eight cups of veggies. Sabrina said, I probably eat meat. It depends on the day, right? Like now my stomach doesn't have as much room as it did when I was losing weight before. But honestly, like 
that couldn't stop me from eating four slices of pizza one night, right? If I really pushed myself and I was really in a bad place. So again, if you're in, if you're if you're in 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 advance planning those veggies, and this brings up what Hannah brought up before we hit record on the call, which is the best way to make yourself only available to hit your short-term goal, like non-negotiably, like I'm signing up to be available for this, is to meal prep because the only way to really be veggie the most. Somebody needs to mute themselves. Charlotte? Yeah, thanks. Um, the only way to make sure that it isn't a tircha, that it isn't like, a, oh my God, this is so much work, is to prep and to prep in bulk. So this is where making, you know, one or two different pureed vegetable soups, you know, cutting like huge boxes of vegetables, buying the pre-washed lettuce or washing two or three heads at a time getting those, I love those little, little cherry tomatoes that are so sweet and like cucumbers and, and like make a big thing of dressing at the beginning of the week. These kind of meal preps, right? Frozen veggies in the air fryer, but I'm talking about stuff that's like really ready, like really ready. This week, I was like, I really want to stay weight loss this week. When I cooked for Shabbos, I made an extra kilo of chicken breast in my favorite seasoning, yummy, yummy. But like, I ended up having it twice today. Because I was in a rush, but I ate, I ate, per, I ate really great today because it was just ready. I was just available. And even when I wanted to have maybe a few squares of chocolate today, like the thought came in, like, I'm not available for squares of chocolate today. I'm having Lily's hot cocoa. Like, I'm just not available for that. And so as we get closer to Pesach and Purim, if you have a short-term goal, it's okay. So let's see, anybody else have questions on a short-term goal before we contrast this with long-term goal? Yoni, you have something you want to I, add? I wanted to say also that when someone, and, and we've seen this, Lily, at the beginning, um, and I remember yes. back in the days of when you even did like literally meal plans for people. Yeah. Um, there are people who get caught up on, I can't eat the same thing every day. And the, I, I'm not going to even talk about the I can't because that's using excuses. But the moment you are open to being, and I'm going to say the word bored with your meals, and by bored, I mean eating the same thing for breakfast every day, eating maybe two differentiate, like two different lunches, A, B, A, B, eating two or three different. If you're okay with keeping really to a routine of meals within two or three different same meals, you will see weight loss because you're able to have at your disposal very easily Six chicken, chicken breast, bum, 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 done in your freezer, ready to go. Pull one out, defrost, it's already cooked. You're just heating it up. Certain things, the second you're able to put that, whatever that is in your head to the side of, well, I have to have it cooked fresh right now as I'm eating it, but okay with having prepped food, you are setting yourself up to know already what you're eating. So the decision, you know, fatigue, and the anxiety around mealtime has disappeared. You just get to enjoy your food and get on with whatever you're doing. And then it's really not all about the food. It's just the enjoying way. Yeah, up and, and I want to build, I want to build on what you just said. And this is also the cure for emotional eating, guys. The first cure for emotional eating is to recognize when you're having a trigger to emotionally eat. And if you have salmon and broccoli and salad and roasted carrots available. And you're like, I don't want to eat this. I want a big pizza right now. You know, you're having an emotional trigger. It could be a birthday. It could be a positive. It could be a negative. It could be a tired, whatever the hundred different kinds of hunger that you only talked about last week are. You know, it's not nutritional hunger because your food is literally prepped in front of you. And that's a minute to like really show up with some compassion for yourself and be like, everything I'm feeling right now is totally legit. But going to eat pizza isn't going to make me feel better. What do I actually need? And eating pizza at this birthday party isn't going to make the birthday party more fun. Isn't going to make this girl's night more fun. What's going to make this girl's night more fun is me being authentic where I am and with what I want. And right now, I want to put on a perm costume this year and not feel self-conscious. And so I want to feel my best. I have a short-term weight loss goal. And in order to make it happen and not feel like you're constantly distracted, you have to kind of clear the deck and you have to say, this is really important to me right now. 
Now here's the hiccup. How do we transition that mindset with, I have a lot of weight to lose and I don't want to, I'm not available for clearing my schedule right now. Maybe you have a lot of things coming up and you're not in a space where you want to clear the deck, but you really do want to be in a better place for Pesach. You really thinking all the way through the summer now, okay? Please listen. <laughs> Open your mind. It's okay. You don't have to see short-term, quicker success. You can still have an amazing journey. There isn't like only one right way to go about this. But don't compare your results to somebody who is making this a priority. Somebody who makes this a priority is going to have different results than somebody else who this is important, but the speed isn't a priority. So how do you maintain success over the long term? You really celebrate the short-term progress, fitting into the skirt a little bit better. The increase in your energy levels, those non-scale victories, you lean in and you lean in and you share with your group and you share in the community and you share and you share and you share. That's how you create the long-term success over time, even when every date night feels like the perfect reason to have an alcoholic beverage. And especially if you've been in maintenance mode and you got to shift yourself out like me, I've been sharing very honestly, it takes me a few weeks to shift out of maintenance mode because there's a lot of little habits that are maintenance habits that are not weight loss habits and they add up. And I'm not always ready or mentally ready to in one day make that change. Sometimes it's like, oh yeah. And look, here's another habit. And yeah, here's another habit. So it might take a minute, but the more that you get excited about the changes you're already seeing, the easier it is to open up to and maybe I don't have to have alcohol and carbs and challah and dessert on Shabbos. Maybe every office party, I don't have to participate in the food part. Maybe I can be the person who always writes the beautiful thing on the card. And if you live in Israel, makes those super annoying poems that they make you read out loud. Um, okay, sorry for everybody who loves those poems. They drive me crazy. Um, focus on positive changes that have already occurred. Don't worry about your setbacks or the perceived difficulties. Keep a list of them because slowly you they will become your greatest like things that you're proud of. For me, late time eating took forever, forever to overcome. But like I it just every night I go to bed and I don't eat after dinner. I, it just makes me happy. It makes me proud of myself that that's not where I am anymore because it was where I was stuck for a very long time. The same thing with those extended lunches that I felt like I would start eating and it would take a hard time to stop. Once in a blue moon that happens and it rarely happens like it used to, almost never. And so when I finish lunch and I get up and I make my tea and I clear my plate, I give myself a pat on the back because that used to actually take a lot of willpower and now it's habit. Vary your exercise routine. Try the new recipes. Again, if you're not interested and available for consistent meals right now, then at least lean into making healthy new recipes and starting to create your absolute favorite recipe book. Okay. Let's talk about long-term goals and how you maintain on the long-term. Anybody have questions or want to share wins that you've had about kind of maintaining over the long-term your motivation? What has helped you stay connected? Look, everybody in this group who's on today has been in this community for a long time. What are some things that have helped you to stay engaged and, and, and still seeing that you want to and that you're committed to your health journey? Elaine, it's such a treat to see you on the call. You want to share something? <laughs> I know I usually were snowboarding on Sundays when I it's know, cold, so I can't make it, but we didn't go today. Um, I mean, I have to say, like, I actually just posted something in my stories this morning, just about that whole idea of how progress isn't linear, right? Because I, and it was funny, it was, I was looking at my, like my weight and my tracking on like the app, the bod app. And it was like, woo, 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 like you, right. And then 
since August, it's for the, it's been going like, there's still ups and downs, but it's, I've been like super, super committed. And it's just been like more, there's been less of the ups. Um, and everybody has and, seen that, right? Everybody has seen how often she's been posting, like really showing up in the 2B group and in our group. Yeah. So like I, that was like something that I felt like for this school year, right? Like as a teacher, it's once the school year starts, it, it can like, you know, I can have my, my goals and where I'm going and consistency start. And then like, a month or two into the school year, it just drops. It's really just because of everything going on. So I was like, no, this year I like need to be committed. I need to be consistent. I need to like lean into just that accountability. So like I even, I've just been using my like social media stories to like, I made this little template that I like try to post every day with just like, if I've reached like my other things, like meditating and like just other goals I have for myself too. Um, and it's just been really helpful as well as I think the, like the biggest thing for me too, is just seeing the changes, right. When I, when I like see the progress and like the bigger progress, it feels so good. Right. And then like finding on those days when I feel a little, maybe lower, like maybe the scale went up and I'm like, Oh, like what I shouldn't have eaten that popcorn or like whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Right. Or the slice of pizza with the kids last night, then I'll like put on something that like was tight or never fit properly. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, I'm rocking this. Like, I still feel really good. It doesn't matter. Like maybe the scale went up like three pounds because of sodium or like whatever, or the time of the month or whatever it is. But just seeing those things, I think for me has been really, really helpful in this like progress that I'm having right now. And something else I just want to give you like big props for is you've really been using the meditations and the fivers on mm -hmm. the app. And so if you want to talk for a minute about how those have come, because those are new and I've seen you like really use the heck out of those. So for people who don't know, you want to tell them what they are and how they've really been helping you to increase your motivation and your results. Sure. Well, so I ju I'll just say like the, like the, I believe like the Elisa's meditations, I literally just found, like I clicked on that new <laughs> meditation thing. And I saw that and I was like, Whoa, wait, this is so awesome. Cause they're only four minutes and they're just such a nice way to just like add that little piece into that gives you that, that little motivation for the day. Um, so I try to do that after I exercise, I then will do that. Um, which those have been awesome. And then the fivers have been really great. I'll, I use them in different ways. I don't always do it, but depending on the time, like if I say I'm really short on time and I don't have time to actually do my whole like 20 to 30 minute exercise, I'll maybe do like a couple of fibers. So I'll start with like a cardio one and then maybe I'll do abs or something or legs or whatever it is. And then maybe do a stretching. So I kind of get a, I almost get a whole workout, but shorter. Um, but I also have been using them just at the end. If I have the time and I'm like feeling very, you know, like pumped then I'll add another fiber on um, to that. So, oh, and I didn't you asked me to explain what those are, but so the fibers are really just the trainers have these five really short, really awesome five minute workouts. You can just add on or do on their own. And they're like, they're all focused on something. Some are just stretches, um, also, but they're like focused on an area. So there's like abs, there's legs, there's arms, there's different things like that. So they're super awesome to just like add on for whatever. So. Perfect. Thank you very much. I think that was really helpful. And so this brings me into the last point for tonight. And that's, there's been talk in the group about what happens when we have this like underlying belief that we're not going to keep the weight off. And there are times that people do put some weight back on, you know, whether it's 10 pounds or 15 pounds or 30 pounds, like we've all seen it in the group there are people who have put some weight back on. And so if, if you've ever been that person, whether or not you had a baby, whether or not something happened or was just over time, I just want to give you a big hug right now and you're not alone. That doesn't mean that the belief that we're for sure going to gain it back should be there because just like there's not that big a difference to putting on weight to being able to take it off again. 
You know, and Alana talked about that sometimes when we put back weight on with to be mindset, she talked about in this week's call, it's because we were treating to be mindset like a diet. When we treat it like a diet and we hit a goal, whether it's a 10 pound goal or a 15 pound goal or a 30 pound goal, and then we celebrate by bringing the food back in the house and think I should be able to ignore it now. I should be able to go out and eat all the pizza every night with my kids. I'm at my goal weight. I should, I should, I should. Then we treated it in the end like a diet. And then we're going to regain our weight. What's beautiful here is you take that short-term goal and you clear the decks. And then you take your long-term goal and you're like, hey, there are times, pace up. You're not going to necessarily want to clear the decks. You're going to want to have your plan for those favorite desserts. Perm. You're going to not maybe want to clear the deck, you're going to want to have wine, or you're going to want to have a treat. But she said it really well in this week's uh, office hour. She said like, um, oh, shoot, just I wrote it down and like, just left my head. She said, you know, whatever you have every day isn't a treat. If you're having a treat every day, it's not a treat anymore. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. So again, if Perm and Pesach are coming and we want four squares of dark chocolate to feel like a treat, or we want our chocolate covered bananas to feel like a treat on Pesach, then if we're still having them every single day now, they are not going to feel like a treat come Perm and Pesach. You know, that's why I've cut back on my healthy desserts and healthy treats now, because when I make them on Pesach, I want them to feel like an indulgence again, not just like, oh, well, I can, you know, be losing and having these, but I'm losing really slow. They're great for long term. They're great for my treats. But really, for the short term goal, they're just a distraction. They're just stealing the excitement for when I make them after I haven't had them for a long time. So a few things to do to kind of change that belief that we're not going to be able to keep the weight off. Number one, it's really look at that negative self-talk. And I love that Elaine was talking about these fibers and Elise's meditations. I have been journaling now since Corona, most mornings, no one's perfect, not me, not anyone. I don't journal every single day, but I had a very long 36 years of a ton of negative self-talk. And even three years later, there's still a lot of junk in there. And so by taking something positive and listening to a positive meditation, even if I don't get one second of like quietness, like I'm never gonna, not never, I'm just not easy for me to clear my mind, but it doesn't matter. Just listening to Elise for five minutes or listening to Deepak, who I love with Oprah for 10 minutes. And then when I can't, quiet my mind, or it's just getting too loud in there, taking out my journal and just dumping it all on a page. It rewires your nervous system. It rewires your brain. It rewires how you think. And when you tell yourself every single day that you are resilient and that you can bounce back from any situation, and then you're journaling and you're like, yeah, I am resilient. I really bounced back from this in my life, but it bounced back from this in my life. And this is really, I'm not feeling the bounce today. And I really want to bounce today. And so this is what I'm going to do for myself today. You know, it's really important. And changing that language to, instead of like, I'm afraid I'm not going to keep my weight off to, I am capable of maintaining a healthy weight and working towards that. I can make healthy choices to maintain my weight. Focus on those long-term lifestyle changes. Really focus on the long-term because you can't clear your decks all the time but you need to know what the difference looks like. Those small victories, the more that you practice celebrating a small victory, the more you truly create that self-belief. People who are succeeding and aren't regaining the weight are continuing to share the wins. Even if it feels old to share how you brought your groceries in the house this week by yourself, it never gets old when you continue to appreciate. And what we appreciate appreciates, as they say in the finance world, that grows. So really don't take for granted that those genes fit you. The day you start taking it for granted is the day you stop noticing and the day they start not fitting as well. It's really important to be kind to yourselves and to seek support, whether it's in your WhatsApp group or in the Facebook group or in the To Be Mindset group or reaching out for one-on-one coaching to anybody who does it in our community. But 
seeking support is never wrong. And it's never that you're not good enough. It's never that you didn't have the tools available. We all have the tools available. Sometimes we need some either tough love or compassionate handholding to get us out of our own way. I need it myself often. In our coach thread, very often we share, right? Like you only like, we're like, and it's a little bit of a, you know, storm around here and I'm struggling and I really want to keep it together. And I, I need to accept, I don't have it together. And what's the next best option to have it together today. Okay. Because we're support there for each other. And you guys have that as well. And you have that, if you don't have an accountability buddy, get one. If your accountability relationship has gotten stale, the best way to be accountability buddy is to share your struggle and then to share yourself overcoming it. That's the best way to be an accountability buddy. In the end, really the only way to overcome a belief that we can't keep the weight off is changing the self-talk, focusing on how we've already become a different version of ourselves and constantly celebrating the victories, constantly and consistently seeking support. Patience, persistence, and a positive attitude are really what's going to get us short-term results and long-term results. Okay. It is now exactly on time. I'm going to close off the talking again. And I really want to hear from you guys. What were some takeaways you had from today? An insight, something that resonated with you, something you heard, something that you were able to visualize differently, um, share. And so we can all kind of hear where you are, or if you have a question, anybody have anything to share or a question? Dun, 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 dun. I see a lot of dark faces. I just want to. I just want to add um, something. Sabrina had written. Um, just I want to share with me when I when yeah. I was talking about being bored and a good way to set yourself up. What she what she pointed out was also important. You could cook, you know, five chicken breasts. But she had written, um, you could just repurpose the same thing. It could be a chicken breast. It could be chicken salad. It could be a lettuce wrap. It could be all these different options. But if you're setting yourself up for success and you're making the same thing five of them, it doesn't mean you have to eat those same five chicken breasts the same way. So Sabrina, thank you for, for pointing that and out. And different so seasonings. Reason. Like when I'm meal prepping, it's so easy to take chicken and then just do two different sauces, three different pans, two different seasoning mixes. Um, it just, it, you know, it's, it's no more effort um, at all. Okay. Resistance, questions. I, everybody want to share a short-term goal or a long-term goal that you're ha- that you want to share, you want to put out there and be held accountable to. How's it going with your cookie, Seema? My goal is to have them all on cookie sheets and leave the kitchen so my husband could come and put them back into the oven. So like watch them. I just roll them. Unavailable for temptation. I love it. Um, yeah. Daria, Rina, Pasha, anybody Thanks. have any questions take away from today? Thanks. Could I ask you something? So of it's interesting because I, I find myself like a little like, sometimes I'm like, great, I'm great with my water. I'm great with my, like, you know, or I'm on like a good path and then I hit a bump. And then it's hard for me to say, oh no, I'm good with that because well, yesterday, you know, and I know to keep going forward and to stay consistent, but like, it's like, it's still like, I guess it's just my negative self-talk also probably that also helps that perpetuate that like no but look what you did and you didn't do that and you're not like you know um okay sorry thanks for letting me know but that's that it exactly it's, it's, it's where the negative self-talk comes in that says that now all the good things we did don't matter because we misspoke or we made this mistake or you know we misunderstood or we miscommunicated or we didn't you know like our the stuff we prepared wasn't you know so the kids ate it or whatever it was and um, it's like, I'll add one kind of spiritual thing into this, but um, I'm learning a new Sefer. And one of the interesting things in the Sefer is it talks about the ego and how really, you know, when we're taking care of our body from this very egocentric place, then when something doesn't go our way, then it's our fault because it's all about us and it's all about the ego. But when we're really doing it in service of, I am going to have so much of a better Purim, I'm going to have so much of a better Pesach, 
I am going to long term be the kind of mother and grandmother and have the kind of positive energy. And I'm not available for the negative energy and distraction of being overweight, let alone the health difficulties, let alone just the distraction of it. That when I look through a mirror, I'm so focused on how I look, you know, it, it, when we can do it from that a little bit of a deeper place, then when something small doesn't go right, or the scale is up, like she, like, you know, like Elaine said, cause I had some pizza or I had some popcorn. We're like, yeah, but I did it in, in, and I'm ready to, to make another choice. Okay. Daria, let me just see. Um, Yoni she can't join Daria by video, from- but I was going to say, yeah, she, I was going to say she can't join by video, but she's basically saying um, that she's going to Europe for the first time. She wants to lose 16 pounds that she gained in the last year. That's a long-term goal, not a short-term goal. Um, I want to be active and easy and going in my travel experience, more resilient with jet lag and all the other. You have quite a bit of time before summer, Daria. So I would definitely be able to say that you, you even have um, the, the breathing space of knowing that you really have that time to amp up habits rather than it's just a short little goal. Like you, you, you know, I don't know when you're going in the summer, but the summer is still plenty away that you can, you can make a, a big dent in that, if not all of it. Yeah, long-term goal is to get 30 pounds off. So if your short-term goal is to get 16 pounds off, so let's just remind ourselves how Alana sets it up is I'm on route to 30 and my next milestone is two pounds, right? Two pounds at a time. My next milestone is two pounds. When do I want to have these next two pounds off by? Now make a menu plan for the next seven days. And let's see, how many pounds you're going to get off if you actually plan out veggie snacks in between your meals and you plan out three plated meals and you meal prep ahead of time more of those choices how much weight can you lose in a week that'll give you a really good idea to then be able to project okay well when i was doing to the best of my prep ability i lost a pound great so i'm going to give myself that is an average right now, two weeks to lose two pounds. And I'm going to keep an eye on it and see that I'm, I'm moving. Now I'm going to look and say, hey, was I really veggies most? Was I really plating it? Or were there a lot of bites, licks, and tastes coming in here? Was there a lot of stuff in my environment getting in the way on top of what I'd already planned? Okay, week two, you look at your environment and you take away some of those temptations because that's not where you are right now. You're just not available to be tempted. You know, July 12th, you have so much time, but really one week at a time say, okay, this is what I learned. This was my best this week. And this is what I got week two. This was my best this week. This is what I got. I fully own and accept. And I'm excited about the results that I'm getting. What am I willing to change next? If we don't change, we won't see a change. So it's up to us to handle the discomfort of change in order to lose weight. And we do that by making the change as convenient as possible and as attractive as possible. Because all change is inherently uncomfortable. Even the change of losing weight is uncomfortable. How many people here have shared all the uncomfortable situations they were in after they lost weight? Or people said things to them or the, you know, they didn't know how to dress themselves. There's, there's discomfort all over the place. But you know what's also uncomfortable, as Alana says, to put weight back on. It's uncomfortable going to Purim and feel like, ugh, ugh. No one likes the ugh. Chose woo over ugh. Okay, I think we're in our last minute. Yoni, you have anything you want to help me wrap up with? Well, no, you just said, and you know, you you literally had just said, you literally had just said about about change. And and we go back to literally what we had said. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And um, I've been hearing it from, I guess, a lot of the challenges this, this, in the last two weeks of, you know, perm is always, and whatever always is followed by. And I said, so why don't we do something different? If you always go into perm and you see it as a not successful holiday, and everyone looks at every holiday, there are people who are challenged more by Hanukkah, there are, I don't, everyone has their different, you know, look outlook on each holiday. But if you're saying that perm is never successful for you, and you keep repeating the same behavior surrounding perm, how about we try something different this year? You know, like that's I'm already the- seeing people saying that they're eating perm candy that they bought for Mishloche Manot already. Okay. So if you're already buying candy in preparation, like they're in the grocery store, it is true. They're all on sale already here in Israel. 
it's like Halloween now, like September, Halloween candy's on sale. Now, perm candy's on sale. You don't need it. And I'll tell you, I saw M&Ms like on sale for like a third of the price they usually are. And I almost bought a package for my kids. And I'm like, whoa, you just almost got sucked in. Your kids don't need a bag of M&Ms that are on sale just because they're on sale. On sale didn't make them any healthier. <laughs> and it's the same thing. And when we can practice that being discomfort, that, that holding space for discomfort, just remember you get comfortable with anything. You really can. And we feel this resistance to change, but we can get comfortable with anything. I know we've got, I got comfortable at 210 pounds until I wasn't comfortable enough that made me change. And now I choose to be uncomfortable with whatever I need to learn to get comfortable with to never put that weight back on. And that's the mindset that keeps the weight off. I am open and available for whatever I need to learn to be comfortable with in my life. So then I'm not going to turn to food. And when I do turn to food, it's a process. Okay, this is how comfortable I'm willing to be with this situation right now. How can I improve my coping skills? And I love also what Elaine was saying and what um, a lot of people were saying was when you shift, uh, also even um, Seema was saying how she shifted her focus away from food. When you're busy, join the declutter challenge. I'm doing it with Rebecca. Do a puzzle. Find something else to be excited about so that all your excitement and joy and focus and goals aren't only about food. And then it's much easier to pre-plan and pre-prep and not be so emotionally invested in the scale because you have all these other areas that you're also excited about in that not being focused on food is benefiting you. Any last questions, thoughts, something that, that was helpful to you today that you guys want to take away with? Rina Ra Rael Elstein, I don't know you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Pasha, anything you guys want to share? You try not to put anything in. Elaine said that in your Mishloach Manot that you're tempted by, and you set an example by not filling your Mishloach Manot with junk food. I had that very uncomfortable conversation with my kids, by the way. This year, I said to them, the mitzvah is real food. I'm not available for wasting money on junk food. That's not the mitzvah. Any junk food you want to put in the Mishloach Manot, you come out of your own money. And they gave me such pushback in the car for about two minutes. And then one of them says, well, what if we made our own hummus? And then we made like some fresh rolls and we gave them like also vegetables and like we made some fun dips. Awesome. Totally. I, I will cover the cost of all of that. But I said, we give the same amount of money to Matanat Le'avionim that we give to Mishlochei Manat. So I'm not available this year for wasting a penny of that on junk food. It has to be real food because it has to be the mitzvah. And that was kind of how I put it to them. And yeah, there was pushback. It was uncomfortable in the car. But then they figured out, hey, you'll pay for popcorn. Okay, you'll pay for popcorn. If we want to buy lollipops, sure, we'll use our own money and we'll give out lollipops. And this will be the other Michelle Chaymanot that we make. And it's hard to have those conversations with your kids sometimes. But when it's coming from an aligned place, it's worth it. It is worth it because we are setting an example. Yoni, any last thoughts you have? Nope, you're not, you're muted. Oh, I said for once I'm at a loss of words. It, it doesn't happen often, so you should rub Okay, good. But... I really appreciate all your questions, uh, all your comments. Really, please be in touch in the group. Uh, I'm going to have some posts going up, continuing these conversations over this week. We're going to talk about short-term motivation, long-term motivation, and overcoming the belief we can't keep the weight off because those are the three topics we really covered today and ask questions this week in the group engage we love you guys have an amazing week good night